It may seem to have happened ages and ages ago, but it was really only a few years back that our story of the adventures of Robert and Kathy Wilson started. To be exact, on a gloomy spring day in London in the year 1940. Look at them as they start the most wonderful chapter of their lives on this very exciting morning. to come back in a taxi tonight and keep it waiting. Yes, dear, I'll have everything packed and ready. I don't need that. Now, you know it helps you when you're upset. I'm not upset. I'm perfectly confident. Perfectly. Mr. Staines, could you please tell me when Mr. Hargrove will see me? Mr. Hargrove will see you, Mr. Wilson, in his own good time. Yes, Mr. Staines. Wilson? Yes, Mr. Stane. Mr. Hargrove will see you now. Yeah, thank you, sir. Now, this is what you have to say to him. Mr. Hargrove, I've served the firm for five years, all but eight weeks, Mr. Hargrove. And I think Mr. Staines would answer for me that I've served it loyally and devotedly. I'm only eight weeks short of the five years, Mr. Hargrove, and so I hope that you'll make an exception in my favor as regards making up the salary. If you could overlook the eight weeks. Thank you, Mr. Hargrove. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it very much, Mr. Hargrove. Wilson. I'm sorry. Mr. Hargrove is waiting for you. Go ahead, please. Sit down, gentlemen. Sit down. Ah, the 
three musketeers, eh? So you're off, are you? Good lads. I did the same in the last war. Joined up at once. Yes, two years in the trenches, and then a nice, comfortable blighty. And I wish the same for you. I'm, uh, I'm happy to say that anybody who's been with us five years will have the difference between his salary and his army pay made up by, uh, by the firm. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, sir. Very much. Not at all. It's only right, and the firm is happy to do it. Well, good luck. And the sooner you all get back, the better pleased we shall be. Goodbye. Thank you very much, sir. It's very generous. We appreciate it. Goodbye, Goodbye sir. Appreciate it very much. Oh, yes, of course. Wilson. I'm sorry about it, just eight weeks short, but a rule, you know, a rule is a rule. And if I were to make an exception in your case, it would mean that somebody who'd been with us four years, short of two months, would think he had a claim. You do see what I mean, don't you? Oh, yes. Yeah, and then uh, someone who'd only been with you three years would... Exactly. And yeah. the firm simply couldn't afford it. Oh, no, sir. It would work out at... Uh... Let me see now, what would it work out? Yes, exactly. You've got a head on your shoulders, and I can tell you this. We're extremely sorry to lose you. But, with your sane point of view, you're bound to get on, even in the army. The Navy, sir. No, the principle is the same. And remember that your job will be waiting for you if you come back. Uh, when you come back. Goodbye, Wilson. You don't want to fight, but by Jingo, if you do, eh? Come and see us when you're on leave. She won't eat you. Poor little Cathy thinks everything you say and do is wonderful. All you've got to do is to go in and give her a great hug and say, look, old lady, or sweetheart, or what have you. Look, dear, it's bad news, but it isn't going to get us down. We've got to look at the silver lining. It's always darkest before the dawn. And there's 97 pounds 10 in the savings bank, well, I'm going into the Navy tonight. So this is what we do, my girl. You put on your bonnet and out we go. And we blew the odd seven pounds, ten on a farewell dinner and a bottle of champagne. Cathy, I didn't get it. He wouldn't. But you've been there nearly five years. Yes, nearly, but not quite. Oh, Robert, how mean. You see, a rule's a rule. I am sorry. Oh, well, never mind. We've got nearly a hundred pounds, and anyway, the war can't last forever. Oh, no, it'll be over for Christmas. Anyway, we'd better hurry. I've only got to lock the bag. What's that? It's a sponge bag. A shaving thing, some things. Kathy, it's lovely. I don't expect many of the other sailors will have one. No, I don't expect they will. Anyway, if the worst comes to the worst, I could always get a job. No, Cathy. 
Now, that's the last thing I'd wanted to do. You know how strongly I feel about that. Just as you say, Robert. I'm joining the Navy, too. Going to Rockhampton. HMS Benbow. Oh. Any new light for Benbow? Anyone for Benbow? Anderson? Yes, sir. Abbott? Yes. Bradley? Yes. Braithwaite? Yes. Dunham? Yes. Floyd? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Jenkins? Yes. Jackson? Yes. Jane? Yes. Kirby, yes. Manders, yes. Newcomb, yes. Scott, yes. Smithson, yes. Taylor, yes, sir. Walton, yes. Wilson. Yes. That's all, lads. Follow me. Here you are, Bill. This is your last new entries. Okay, I want to turn in. Choose your cot. Have much time before I pipe down. Not such a bad looking lot this time, eh? Not such a good looking lot either. Oh, come off it, Bill. You always was a pessimist. I've seen worse. <laughs> Nothing much worse. Not the name, anyway. Well, a couple of weeks in your loving care and you won't know him. A couple of weeks and I won't want to know him. Good evening. Good evening, mate. Is this bed engaged? No, oh, that's not a bed. It's a bunk. Bunk? You're in the Navy now. Oh, I see. Oh, yes, of course. When do we actually get on the ship? What ship? HMS Benbow. This is it, old son. You're in His Majesty's ship Benbow right now. This? The Benbow? But it's just a hut. This is what they call a shore establishment. And all shore establishments are run like ships. See, how do you know so much about it? Oh, there's nothing much they can tell me about the Navy. I used to be a sea scout. Oh. Turn out 
There. Ain't that a bit more spring-like? Next, please. All right, son. <laughs> he must look so funny without his moustache. He'll look younger, anyhow. Oh, he didn't want to look younger. That's why he grew it in the first place. He thought it would be more dignified for the office. Oh, I wonder how he'll stand it. He's got such a delicate stomach. <laughs> Startling. Aren't you going to eat your lovely grub? You must know that letter by heart, Bob. What'd you keep reading it for? It's Kathy. She's joined the rent. my bunk. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought the chief said any bed in the hut. She said nothing of the kind. Oh, but I assure you she did. She did not say any bed in the hut. She said any bunk in the cabin. Oh, yes, I mean that. Any bunk in the cabin. Take that bunk. You'd better stow your kit. Can I leave it here on the floor? Dick, girl, Dick. Don't forget you're in the Navy now. This is not the floor. It's the deck. That's the deck head. This is the cabin. And the kitchen is the ruddy galley. And if you don't remember that, you're going to get into trouble. Yes, I do know. It's just that I get flustered and I forget. What's your name? Wilson. Mrs. Wilson. And what have you done with him? Who? The fortunate Mr. Wilson. Oh, he's at sea. That'll teach him. This him? Yes. This looks like before. Where's after? Oh, after? What do you mean? Not very bright, are you? Well, at least I'm not rude. <coughs> if you've got a cold, go straight to sister. A senior rating in this cabin, I won't have anyone scattering germs. Well, I can't help having a cold. Of course you can. Proper diet, fresh air. I think you're being extremely impertinent. It's horrid being new, isn't it? 
You'll quite like it in a week or two. We're not so bad. What's your name? Clayton. Dizzy Clayton. Have a cigarette. Oh, no, thank you. My husband doesn't like me to. Do you think there's somewhere where I could post this? Of course. I'll come with you if you like. We'll just have time before supper. I'll tell the chief we're going to the post. You can't come out looking like that. Try some lipstick. Oh, no, I never use lipstick. My husband doesn't like me to. Oh, well, then you must never use it. Never. Trouble with the Greek over there. She seemed to want to go off on her own. Captain gave her a devil of a talking to just now. What's for grub? An oily original dish known as corned beef ash. Good. I'm as hungry as a horse. Have a wet. Oh. Yeah, not too deep. Who's the pinner? My missus. I'm writing to her. I didn't know you was married. I didn't know it myself. Last leave it was. Only had one day for honeymoon. What's the matter? Wasn't it enough? Funny things, honeymoons. Mine was lovely. I've had four. Three regular and one in America. And what I say is you can't judge a wife by the honeymoon. Now, my last, she didn't want to wear her trousseau. Said she was saving it for the neighbours when we got home. What happened to the other, Stripey? Well, my first was a bit light-hearted, if you get what I mean. But we had a grand five days, though. Never out of a pub till we was pushed. What happened to her? We lost touch. Oh. How about your honeymoon, Bob? Well, as a matter of fact, my wife and I went to Clacton-on-Sea in, in August, uh, on a tandem. Daisy! Daisy! Give me a Only a few windows broken. A couple of telegrams for you, Mrs. Hemmings. Came through just now on the phone. Please tell my wife all leave cancelled, Wilson. That's one, and the others. If Mr. Wilson arrives, explain all leave cancelled. Will he please contact me at new number? Catherine Wilson. Yes, 
poor dears. You know the Wilsons that do have bad luck with their leaves. She hasn't seen them since he was called up. She's a wren. And he's in the Navy, isn't he? Oh, well, they take all sorts these days. a little lot, aren't they? Well, not as bad as last night. My husband says in six months we'll be able to give them twice as much. Who's on watch? Wilson, sir. Yes, sir. This signal has to be taken across to Octopus immediately. Yes, sir. And in case they don't know, tell them what's happened to the road and say we can't get through by telephone either. Aye, aye, sir. signal from Commander Baker, sir. Send her in. Come in, miss. An urgent signal for you from Commander Baker, sir. And I'm to say that the telephone's broken down and nobody can get through by road. Williams. Sir. See if the captain's in the building, will you? Aye, aye, sir. Did you come alone? Yes, sir, and a skimmer. Have any trouble? No, sir. It's a bit noisy. Frightened? Yes, sir. Don't blame you. So am I. When I was your age, I should be in a downside more frightened. Like a cup of tea? Yes, sir. Get yourself a cup before you go. Thank you, sir. You know, you'll have something to tell your children when you marry. I am married, sir. Oh? Where's your husband? A sea, I hope. Yes, sir. How long is it since you saw him? What's well, about 18 months, sir. A long time, 18 months. Yes, sir. It's a long time. How do you spell nostalgia? N-O-S-T-A-L-G-I-A. -A. Nostalgia? What is it? Oh, it's what I feel when I'm away from my wife. I've got to say sunny, and I? It's not so easy riding home when you ain't seen your wife for two years. Well, as I see it, there's some wives you can write too easy, and some you can't. And Stripe is inexperienced. <laughs> now, my present old girl's all right. I can always see her in my mind's eye. But my last old woman it was all right when I was with her. But after I've been away for a long time, I found myself forgetting what she looked like. You couldn't even remember her face? Yeah, that's right. She was a good wife to him, anyways. But when we was apart, she sort of faded out. You know, went kind of misty. Sort of out of focus? Yes, that's right. Can you see your wife, Bob? Hmm? Of course I can. Is she a blonde? Well, yes, I suppose you wouldn't call her a blonde. Good looker. Well, she's just an ordinary girl. She's simple, uncomplicated, quiet, dependable sort of person. Yes, that's the strong point about Catherine. She's, she's thoroughly dependable. Have you got her picture? Yes. Yes, she is. Hmm. Oh, yes. You're right there, Bob. Nice, quiet little number, I should say. Not the flighty sort. You'll know where you are with her when you get shore leave. Yeah, no need to knock at the front door and run round the back. They're always the best in the long run, them quiet ones, even if they ain't much fun. <laughs>
was a wonderful party, but in five minutes it's lights out. Oh, I can't finish my letter. You're not writing to Robert at this hour. I sort of thought I ought to. Didn't you have a good time? Oh, yes. Only it's because I had a good time. It doesn't seem fair to Robert somehow. Why is he so mad about dancing? Oh, he hates it. And you see, while I was dancing with your cousin, I suddenly realized how he hates it. See what I mean? I'd rather like to meet your Robert. Oh, I don't think you'll get on. He's not done anything or gone anywhere exciting like your cousin. Why didn't you call him Richard? Yes, he asked me to. Oh, he has had a wonderful life. Robert's in the city, isn't he? Hmm. Bookkeeper. Richard told me all about the docks at Hong Kong. Why, he practically built them, didn't he? Well, he did repair work on them, I believe. How old is Robert? About Richard's age. I imagine he's learning Chinese. Who, Robert? Robert, Chinese. Don't be silly, Richard. Kathy. Hmm? Had he charm when you met him? Who, Richard? Robert. Oh. Well, he was always very kind. Sorry, girls. Time. Do you know, Dizzy, I've never danced since I married Robert. Hmm? Huh? It's a wonderful sensation to dance with the right man. With whom? Oh, with the right man. on the head is nothing. One can't tell about the hands yet. Just keep him quiet. How is he, sister? He'll be all right. They tell me he rode for five days with his hands half frosted. Mm. Oh, what a wonderful view. Guarded by ships and all our sea are own. Who said that? A poet 300 years ago in another old fight for freedom. Oh, I do envy you. You've read everything and traveled everywhere. <laughs> I do read, but I've never traveled. Why don't you after the war? Well, you don't know my husband. Mm, don't I? Your husband, I should say he's about five foot eight? Six foot, when he stands up. Mm, weedy. Oh, no. He's always been delicate, of mm, course, but... Weedy. Stoops a little. Winds the clock before he goes off the office, leaves on the stroke of eight, and comes home at 6.30 exactly, year in and year out. Grumbles a little, has a yellow finger from cigarettes, doesn't drink. Likes bicycling, and kept white mice when he was a small boy. Oh, I think you're being perfectly hateful. Keep still. My husband is devoted to me, and I am to him. He's never looked at anybody else. He can't talk intellectually and spitefully, like... Me. And I'm not saying he's Clark Gable, but it, he is dependable. A habit, merely. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you might have kept still another moment. Oh, it's not bad. You can look now, if you like. It's not me. Who else? Oh, it's very lovely, but it's not a bit like me. It's exactly like you. I didn't know you could draw. No, oh, nobody ever thinks a naval architect can. Can I have it? I want to send it out to Robert. Oh, but I wanted it for my husband. You didn't know who it was. Why should he? Is there anyone else you want written to? Oh, I won't bother you. I'll be able to write myself in a day or two. Rather hard on her, whoever she is, to be kept waiting. Even a day or two. Only my wife. Only your wife. Well, I mean, whether she gets a letter a day or two... Sooner or later, she won't mind. Is she pretty? Nice looking rather than pretty. 
At least I thought she was when they first met her. Where was that? At the Polytechnic. You see, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an engineer. You know, bridges, roads, India. On the sort of dreams, you know. I went to the Polytechnic evening classes. Oh, it was there that I met Cathy. Oh. She was studying shorthand or something. We fell in love, married, and that was the end of that. I see. I seem to be pouring out the entire story of my life. People always unburden to their nurses when they're getting better. That's what we're here for. Well, I can't see myself unburdening to matron. <laughs> Hello, Scotty. How are you? I'm fine. I'm the cut's left whisker. How's yourself? Oh, I'm fine, too. Well, what do you think of Tunis? I like it myself, but it's not to be compared with good old Glasgow. Give me sucky holes to every time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sister. Yes? Now, don't go for a minute. I want to ask you something. Before I go, would you... Could we have a... Sort of evening, sort of final evening. I'd love to. Would you? Of course. Elena. Yes, Robert? I've never met anyone like you before. Well, I could say the same of you. Oh, it wouldn't be true. My sort of two a penny. So am I. No, not in my world. What exactly is your world? I'll tell you if you like. 87 Lennox Gardens, top flat from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 a.m. Jones and Hargrove, 6 Leadenhall Street from 9 a.m. till 6. A long desk with Mr. Smith on my right and Mr. Jones opposite. Mr. Scott in charge of the room. Morgan, over there, just by the door. Kid, the office boy, up and down the passage all day long, always dragging his feet. Hawkins, the doorman, whistling to himself in the corridor. That's my world. Oh, except for a fortnight once a year to Clacton-on-Sea. Poor Clacton-on-Sea. What's wrong with it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the place. Just us. When you move a garden roller off a patch of grass, you know how yellow and flat the grass looks. Well, that's just how we looked, lying on the beach, getting our fortnight sunshine for the year. We? Yes, we. Me and Jones and Smith and Scott and Kid the office boy and Hawkins the doorman and... Oh, no, not Morgan. Oh, no. Morgan always went biking. On a tandem with Mrs. Morgan. <laughs> yes, we all got tanned in the summer. But it wore off by the end of September. Just as everything else wore off. When you do the same job day in, day out, year after year, it's easy to slack off taking exercise, slack off reading. <sighs> Grooves comfortable. So's a grave, they say. Well, the war got me out of it for the time being. But that's what I've got to get back to. Oh, I say, do I sound sorry for myself? You do. You ought to be proud of yourself and of the millions of others like you. And those who had to stay behind in their London offices. They haven't done so badly, those people who stay behind in their London offices. Grass under the Rolex? My husband used to say the grass is the toughest thing in the universe. I didn't know you were married. You're not very observant, are you? My husband used to say that to him, the city of London was the most romantic spot on earth. I expect you've heard of him, Erlingham, the explorer. Oh, yes, of course I know him. I mean, he's... He, well, everyone knows him. He was once a London office boy. And do you know what started him off? The names of the city streets. He used to say it took him travelling across the world with Capet and Columbus. But most of all, it was the names of his fellow clerks. He'd have said to you, a Hawkins fought the Armada. A Smith, Captain Smith, married the Princess Pocahontas and founded Virginia. Scott reached the South Pole. And Paul Jones... It was the American Admiral who... Well, let's face it, 
got the better of us. But our problem's entirely different. We're the ordinary Smiths and Joneses. We're the crowd. My husband was always one of the crowd. That's why one listened to him. He was wonderful. He knew all about people who lived hundreds of years ago. How they thought and how they felt. He knew how I thought and felt. Where is he now? He was killed in Burma six months ago. He had a mind like a lamp. And then the war comes and it's out. I'm glad we've known each other. The souvenirs of old romances, the roses, the perfume, the glory. No more on my Oh, I must go. Belong to other lovers and to other Please don't come. Goodbye, I'll Robert. never ask the orchestra to play for me some sentimental sweet refrain. No, no, not I. I don't want to be Again. The chapter is ended, the last word is spoken, the letters return, just the ties are all broken. Farewell to romance, for I'm finished and through. The first and the last of my love shall be you. Um, it will be 50 francs, monsieur. Oh, I, I, I forgot something, uh, mademoiselle. Could you add one word? Oui. Love, just before the signature. Love. Oh. Expect me any time. Mm. Love. Robert. Oh, that will be another five francs. Thank you. Love? Mais qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? Mais amour, voyons! <laughs> Wilson, telegram for you. Oh, thanks. Bad news? Hmm? Oh, no, not at all. Dress, Kathy. Hmm? Oh, oyster satin. That from Robert? Yes, the cable's coming home on leave. Oh, how lovely for you. Yes, isn't it? Let go, Forrest. Let go up. Bear off, Forrest. Bear off, up.
love you. You've known that for some time. No, Richard, you're fond of me, just as I'm fond of you, but you're not in love with me. Anyway, you told me yourself you never meant to fall in love again. I didn't mean to, but I have. I suddenly realize I'm two persons, and I used to be one. I'm two persons, and I don't like either of them. At least I don't like the one that you like. Oh, listen, Kathy. Richard. Robert's home. I've got leave. I'm going up on the night train with Dizzy. Since we docked, you've been as sour as weak old milk. Shut up. What's the matter with you? You're going home and leave, aren't you? Shut up. Funeral. I'm so stiff. What of it? This time tomorrow night you'll be with your Robert. Yes, I know that. A whole week's leave with your husband after three years. You should be jumping about with joy. Yeah, I must get up. with Kathy. What's the matter? Three years. What do you mean? It's just what you said. I haven't seen Robert in three years. Three years away, it's a lifetime. I see what you mean. Mind you, I was fond of Kathy and she was fond of me, but the thing we had in common, our home, it was pre-war. And you don't want to go back to it? I do not, but she will. You see, I'm her whole life. Poor little Kathy. Scotty, take my advice. When you get married, have it clear from the start. No clinging. No clinging? Well, my wife's never stood on her own feet yet. And what she's doing in a Wren's setup is beyond me. A launch. Kathy with one of her coals in a launch. Kathy's coals. Scotty, there were times when I'd say to myself, if she gets one more cold, only one more, I'll emigrate. And there were times when I'd think to myself, if I hear the click of his latch key just once more, on time, always on time, I'll set fire to the house. Oh, Dizzy, I can't go back and live that life again. I just can't take it. I don't want to have anything I oughtn't to have, but I can't go and live in that guinea pig hutch with Robert. Could you with Richard? Dick? Why, what's Dick got to do with it? He's in love with you, isn't he? Yes, I suppose so. And you? How do you feel about him? Well, I feel that whatever I feel, I must go back to Robert. 
Because you're married to him. No. Because he can't do without me. Oh, Dizzy, he's such a poor, dear little man. If I weren't there to wind him up and start him off to the office every morning, he'd run down like a clockwork mouse. But why don't you leave her? Leave Kathy? Leave that helpless kitten? That's what she is, you know, just a blind little kitten. How could she manage without me? Why, I think for her, I plan for her. She lives on my vitality. Why, without me, Kathy's like a... like a collar without any start. I could never do that. Never. Here's the situation. Robert will never realize what utter strangers we are to each other unless I tell him. The point is, ought I to? What I can't understand is why you feel he's a stranger. I haven't seen John since Singapore, but... John? You aren't married. Engaged. He's all right. I heard through somebody who got out. You might have told me. Make me feel so small. You talk about three years dimming things. Hi, Kathy. I can see him as clearly. I want him as badly as if he'd been gone three days. What's the good of talking? He'll be back sometime. I can wait. I do envy you. You've got everything coming to you still. But I've been married for years, and there isn't anything left to come. Who is the barnacle? You mean ass, that's me. Funny how photographs let you down. You know, this was quite good of me at the time. Who is the lady? Kathy. No color photographs in those days. Pity. I always say color helps a face. Those days. This snap was taken the year before the war. Now, if a man can change so much in four years, what's the answer? <laughs> Wouldn't like to say. Clear out. It's the only thing to do. I mean, it's for Kathy's own good. What's the use? She's a stranger to me. I'm a stranger to her. When I look at that snap of her, I say, I don't know you. You don't know me. We've never met. Here. You see that in the bicycle? Uh -huh. That's me, too. What's the matter? Nobody would ever know. Nobody? What about her? She married that great ass, not me. I don't want to be that, or that, or that. I want to be myself. They blitzed enough of London. Why couldn't they blitz this, too? Ah, that's tempting providence, Bob. That poor devil's home on his first leave. He's longing to see you. It's a bit hard on him, isn't it? I mean, he thinks everything's the same. Yes, I know. And he'll expect me to... Well, I mean, he's very fond of me. Well, what I mean is that I think it's downright immoral to have to treat a husband as a husband when you haven't seen him for three years. Robert and I are perfect strangers. I can't just resume married life without any preliminaries. I can't just... Oh, I can't explain. Don't fuss. I know what you mean. Yes, but will Robert...
I'm not going in. Don't be a fool. My knees, they're like cotton wool. Go on. Well, look, will you wait for me at the pub? It's a coach and horses just round the corner. I'll meet you there in about an hour. That do you? Yes, that's fine. Promise. Go on, you coward. Always covered in freckles in the summer. <laughs> Poor little Kathy. It'll break her heart. Silly of me for a minute. I thought that was Kathy. She'll be here in a minute. She'll make us a cup of tea. Dizzy! Dizzy, wait for me! Dizzy! What is it? I simply couldn't do it. You are a coward. Yes. Oh, I'm so ashamed. So you ought to be. The least you can do is to telephone him. Oh, yes. Yes, I can do that. Oh, no, I haven't got any coppers. Here are your coppers. Thank you. Hello? Hmm? Kathy? Was that you just now? What? 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 I wondered if you could manage to meet me somewhere. Anywhere the bus stop will do. As you got someone there. Yes, I could hear you talking. Yes, I've got something important I want to tell you. Something private. Oh, no, I don't want to come back to the flat. I'm sorry, Robert. I'm most awfully sorry, but I don't want to come back to you at all. She's out of her mind. What the nurse am I? It's Kathy. She's crazy. She wanted me to meet her at the bus stop. She says she's not coming back to me. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> if you think I'm going to let my own wife walk out on me, you can think again. I'll meet you at the pub around the corner when I'm through with her. Coach and horses. Okay, I'll be there. What's all this about? Well, I thought we'd better have a talk somewhere. On neutral ground. Yes, all right. Well, we can't talk here. No. Let's go over there. Couldn't we sit here and talk? Well, just as you like, but why not come back to the flat? Why not come home? Well, that's just it. You see, it isn't a home to me anymore. I'm sorry, Robert. I'm awfully sorry, but I told you. I don't want to come back to you at all. I see. You see, I've had time to do a lot of thinking. And what about? Oh, about you and me and the life we used to lead before the war. What else? And about the life I intend to lead after the war. And just exactly what sort of life do you intend to lead after the war? Is there someone else? 
Oh, you needn't worry, Robert. I'm still a respectable married woman. Oh, I'm absolutely sure about that, Kathy. Oh, you needn't be so sure as all that. The trouble with me is that I have a conscience and I know how much you need looking after. I lie awake at night wondering whether it's fair to leave you to shift helplessly. Will you please make up your mind once and for all that I'm perfectly capable of looking after myself? Oh, you, I had to wait on you hand and foot. You used to lean on me for everything. Lean on you? <laughs> and when I had the entire responsibility, but the entire responsibility of our two lives on my wretched shoulders, I used to feel like a racehorse dragging a milk cart. A racehorse, you. A milk cart, am I? Oh, really, it's ridiculous to go on like this. I knew you wouldn't understand. Robert, I want a divorce. All right, have one. You mean you agree? Certainly. You're sure? Positive. As a matter of fact, Kathy, by some remarkable coincidence, it was exactly what I wanted, too. Oh, you did, did you? Well, I'm very much relieved. Surprised, but relieved. Well, that's that. What have we better do next? Well, I suppose one gets a lawyer. No, oh, no, I mean now. There's still a lot to talk over. Would you like a cup of coffee or lemonade or something? Yes, I would rather. You'd better go in somewhere then. Coach and horses? Yes. Still trouble with that cold? Cold? Nonsense. I haven't had a cold since you went away. What on earth was the matter with you? You were sniffing like a mad thing down the phone. I was crying. Why? Well, you don't say goodbye to your husband every day. <laughs> you don't say hello to him every day, either. Do you realize I haven't seen you for three years? Not that I can see you now. Terribly sorry. It's quite all right, I'll, really. Uh, I'll get you another. W would you make it a gin, too, please, Robert? Not lemonade. Gin, yeah. Yes, pink gin. Pink gin. Aren't you going to drink yours, too? Oh, yeah. Well, well uh, now, what were we... Wait, 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 what... What were we talking about? Our divorce. Oh, yes, the divorce. Will it be difficult to get? Now, don't you worry about anything, Kathy. You sue me. I'll give you cause. Oh, no, no, we'll stick to the truth. I've deserted you. Oh, no, I take a very strong view of that. It's a bit of a slur, you know. Oh, I don't mind. It can't be helped. No, uh, uh, slur on me, I mean. Well, let's see. Is there anything else we ought to discuss? Well, there's the furniture. Oh, blast the furniture. Sell it. Give it to Mrs. Hemming. I hated the flat anyway. You? But you used to call it your castle. You used to say that there was no place like home. You used to say... I seem to have lingered in your memories a broken gramophone record of Victorian proverbs. <laughs> Tell me, Kathy, was I so awful? Hmm? Oh, what does it matter now? Not a bit, was I? I don't remember. Come on, out with it. Well, you were a bit of an old maid. Old maid? Yes, you know, cut and dried. And then at the least excitement, you dithered. Oh, no, I did not dither. 
cut and dried I may have been on the surface. After all, I spent half my life in an extremely stuffy office, and the other half in an extremely stuffy flat, where the windows were always kept tight shut because my wife had a perpetual cold in the nose. Oh, I didn't... A perpetual cold in the nose. I got no fresh air and no exercise, except a fortnight once a year at Clacton on Sea. My job was boring and my health was poor. Possibly I was, in consequence, just a little lacking in star quality. Just a little. All that I frankly admit. But I was not an old maid and I did not dither. All right, all right, I withdraw, dither. Anyway, I don't suppose I was exactly a pin-up girl myself. Pin-up girl? Oh, no, not exactly. Oh. But, Robert, how could I help it? A woman's place may be the home, but... Oh, I'm not so sure it is. Oh, yes, it is. No, I don't think it is. Yes, it is. It always will be. Only not our sort of home. Oh, Robert, I got so bored. Bored? You too? Yes. You remember that high wall that used to shut out our view? Yes. It was so... so flattening, Robert. Oh, how I used to envy you going down to the city every day. Envy me? Yes, there's something romantic about the city. Oh, I've heard all this before. No, I, I mean, it's, it's exciting. It, it's like the center of a web. That's it. You get caught in it. Oh, no, no, no. Quite the opposite. The threads run out to the ends of the earth. Oh, I never thought about that. I always wanted to travel. Do you know what I did once? No. Tell me. Well, I... No, you laugh. I shan't laugh, Kathy. I shan't laugh. You remember the travel bureau in Victoria Street? Yes. I went in once. Whatever for? I told them my husband and I had come into money and that we were planning a world tour. They were very polite. <laughs> <laughs> I came out with my arms full of folders. A lovely week in Lucerne, a luxury trip up the Amazon, the smile on the Sphinx. And whenever that wall got on my nerves, I used to go for a good travel. I've been everywhere. It's like the hymn on Mission Sunday, from Greenland's icy mountains to India's coral strand. I always wondered if it was red coral or white. White. It says so in the folder. Oh, those folders were wonderful. They were as good as a pink gin. I never caught you reading them. Oh, of course not. I hid them in my stocking drawer. Why? I don't know. I suppose I was afraid of being sneered at. Kathy, I never sneered at you. Never. No, but you'd have been so hurt. You'd have thought it a slur on your old Clacton on Sea. My Clacton on Sea? I detested Clacton on Sea. But you always used to insist upon going there. Only because you said you liked it, did you cold good? Yes, but what else could I say? We spent our honeymoon there, didn't we? Do you remember the lodgings? I do. Do you remember the smell of curry? <laughs> no. Sandry, drinks on the house. Yeah. Do you know what today is, ladies and gentlemen? No. no. It's our golden wedding day. Oh. Yes, I married my missus when I was a lad of 19. Invalided home from fighting the Matabele. I'm 69 and she's 67. Yeah, really? <laughs> what? Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> We've been married for 50 years and never had a quarrel. Oh. Oh. I never believe you. Call me a lad, do you? Five boys and two girls and never a crossword from start to finish. <laughs> so me and my old woman give you our love and invite you to have a glass of beer on the house and a bit of a dance. <laughs> Come on, let's have a drink. Nobody here, they're all dancing. How long's your leave? Ten days. 
How long is yours? Ten days. An airline ticket to romantic places. Where did you learn to dance? Around and about. And fix it up, you know. Here, where did you learn? Around and about and fix it up, you know. What have you done with the other one? What other one? The Nitwit, the old man of the sea, the husband, your Robert. Quiet, that is Robert. Don't be funny. Shut up. Hello. Oh, this is Robert, my husband. This is Dizzy Clayton. How are you? Shall we have a drink? What do you have? Oh, Dizzy always has a gin and lime. Gin and lime. Same again, Cathy. Please. Right. That is not the husband you're going to get a divorce from. That is the husband I'm getting a divorce from. Then all I can say is you must be insane. Just a poor, crazed lunatic. I don't know what you mean. Now, look here. You told me that I don't want to hear what I told you. Come on. Ah, oh, there you are, Bob. Sorry, I'm late. Hello, Scotty. Here, give us a hand with these. Who are they for? For the girls. The girls? Where? Oh, boy, oh, boy. Are they a couple of smashers? Give me a double whiskey, please. What did you do to get rid of the wife? Beat her to death or something? I'll take the one on the right. That is my wife. Your wife? Are you kidding? That's my wife and, and that's a friend of hers. I never was able to understand an Englishman's sense of humor. <laughs> Your wife indeed. Cathy, this is my friend Scotty. Uh, Chief Petty Officer McAllister's. Scotty, this is my wife. How do you do? How do you do? This is my friend, leading Ren Clayton. How do you do? How do you do? Shall we dance? I'd love to. You're not Robert's wife, are you? Why, what makes you think I'm not? After all, look at you. I'm looking, what's wrong? Oh, there's nothing wrong. You're just wonderful, that's all. Why did Robert say there was anything wrong? Robert? Oh, no, no, you misunderstand me. Robert couldn't say enough about you. But somehow or another, I... I didn't get the impression that you were a pin-up girl. Am I really? You're my idea of one. Well, of course, Scotty, husbands don't think of their wives as pin-up girls. Oh, no. He always said how dependable you were, that you didn't waste your money on clothes and makeup and all that sort of thing. About you being so delicate and always having colds. So you see, <laughs> well, I was rather scared of meeting you. Oh, yes, I do see. I couldn't imagine you being so young. Oh, couldn't you? That's lovely. Kathy, another dance? No, thanks. Won't you? I said, no, thank you. How about you? Yes, yeah, sure, thanks. What is the matter? Kathy, what's happened? You're quite different. What has Scotty been saying? Nothing. He's only explained to me just what a dim, dowdy, irritating frump of a woman he was expecting to meet. Clumsy, muddle-headed fool. I thought him very clear and very interesting. I do absolutely understand now, Robert, why you were so keen on getting a divorce. I? I want a divorce? Who asked for a divorce first? Who started the whole thing? Who telephoned who? I did, very naturally. And I agreed, very naturally. Yes, but I am not going to be divorced on the grounds that I'm older than you. Dull, dowdy, sickly, and too I never, to never said anything of the sort. I never... You said I didn't waste my money on makeup. 
You say next that I don't brush my teeth. If you think I'm going to stand that sort of abuse, you're very much mistaken. If you think I'm going to be called an old maid... So you are, an old maid. Kathy, if you say that once more, I'll wring your neck. Wring my neck? What a silly, stupid, hackneyed phrase. My dear Robert, I'm not a meek child wife. I've run myself for the last three years with complete efficiency. I've worked with just as good brains as yours and held my own with them, and had nothing but respect and courtesy wherever I went. Let me tell you this. You were a fairly pleasant person once, and I was doubtful if I was doing the right thing by you. Yes, I was actually afraid of hurting your feelings. Your feelings, as if you had any that weren't exclusively concerned with your own swollen, overbearing, impossible ego. I'm going. All right. Good night. Dizzy, I'm going. They're all going, aren't we? You far to go? Streatham. Kathy's staying with me. Taxi! You'll never get a taxi to go to Streatham at this hour. Taxi! 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 taxi. 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 If we can't get a taxi, we must go to an hotel. You two girls can go to the flat. Taxi! We can go to the flat. I wouldn't dream of going to the flat. She wouldn't dream of going to the flat. Tell her not to be a fool. He says, don't be a fool. Oh, tell him to mind his own business. You heard that, I suppose. Till for the time being, she's still my business. I won't allow my wife to wander around the streets. Taxi! There's a taxi. Taxi! 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 Any you want to go? Stretch them. Oh, no, you don't. Close that door. Now what do we do? Go to the flat. Here's the key. I have a key, Dizzy. She has a key, Robert. I intend to wait here until I get a taxi. She intends to wait here until she gets a taxi. All right. We'll all wait here till she gets a taxi. It would be very much better if they both went back to their drinking. We are perfectly capable of looking after ourselves. I'm going to see you and your friend into a taxi or into the flat. I don't give a hoot in Hades, which you do, but I'll not leave two girls standing on the pavement. Is that understood? Yes, Robert. And it's very sweet of you. Taxi! 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 It's a very pleasant locality. It was before the Blitz. What used to be here? Shops. Very nice little shops. There was a paper shop just here where I used to pick up my evening paper every night as I turned the corner. Just here. Next door to the butcher. The laundry. The butcher. The butcher was opposite. The butcher was next door. Next to the greengrocer. The butcher and the greengrocer were opposite. The paper shop, the butcher, the greengrocer, and the place where I had my suit cleaned were all on the north side. The laundry was on the north side, but the butcher and the greengrocer were opposite. Where's north? There's north. Then the butcher and the greengrocer were... I don't care where North is. The if butcher... If we had a compass to convince the lady. Scotty, if all the compasses in the British Navy were to say that the butcher and the greengrocer were on the North side, then all the compasses in the British Navy would be wrong. The butcher and the greengrocer... Oh, shut up, Cathy! 
Robert, please don't speak to me. Speak to you? My dear Kathy, I don't want to speak to you. Believe me, you flatter yourself, my girl. Conceit. That's what's the matter with you. Blinding, blithering conceit. You doll yourself up decently for the first time in your life, and about time, too. You smother yourself in lipstick, you frizz out your hair like a blonde gollywog, and then you expect me to speak to you. I wouldn't speak to you again if you and I were alone in the Garden of Eden and apples fivepence a pound. Believe me, after tonight, I'll never speak to you again as long as I live. Good night and good bath. There. You see? That's what the war does to men. He's just a brute. And he used to be the kindest, gentlest, most courteous husband. Quarrel? Why, he never so much as raised his voice. Nobody knows but me what a darling he was. I adored him. He was my whole life. Did you hear the things he said to me? Yes. And now, shall we go to your flat? We're all very tired. Conceit. Oh, it's not fair. And it's not frizzed. Of course it isn't, darling. Let's go. Well, I see you safely home. No, thanks. It's just down the road. Goodbye, Scotty. Goodbye, Mrs. Wilson, and thanks for a very interesting and instructive evening. I'm on the brink of matrimony myself. Goodbye. 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 Good night. Never speak to her again. Never, never, never. For once in your life, you've told her exactly what you thought of her. Good. Good. Blinding, blithering conceit. <laughs> she didn't expect that. Overbearing, impossible ego. You didn't expect that, did you? Not that it's true, of course. Ego. Ego. Why, you've never had enough ego. Always thinking of others. Well, that's that. Relax now. You know exactly where you are and exactly where you're going. Exactly. Where are you going? Left? Oh, surely not. Lennox Gardens. Don't be absurd. Not left. Forward. That's it. Forward into the future, alone and unafraid. The past is dead, the future's yours, and nothing's going to stop you. What's the matter, Admiral? Tired alive? <laughs> My little grey home in the west My li- <clears throat> You know that's your eighth cup of tea. Oh, I can't sleep. I can if I'm let. Oh, I'm sorry. But you see, meeting him like that, it reminded me of when we used to meet at the tea shop outside the Polytechnic. I was going to be a typist, doing commercial Spanish, and I'd watched him for a long time, but we never spoke. And then one day I was having something to eat before the evening class, and he came in. There was no room at any of the other tables, so he came up and said, Would you mind awfully if... And I said, Of course not. And then he knocked over my tumbler of milk and was awfully upset. Of course it was upset if he knocked it over. I mean, Robert was upset. He would order me another. And then he said, Haven't I seen you in the Spanish class? I said, yes, and he said, do you always have your supper here? And I said, yes. And he said, do you like it at the Polytechnic? And I said, yes. And 
And then he said, well, it was much later on, perhaps we could lunch together sometimes. I said yes. Well, what are you doing? Oh, of course. You're going to collect your gear. Now, remember one thing. No climbing down, no weakening, just a quiet, dignified entrance, perhaps a charming, distant smile, if she's there, of course. A kindly smile. A little bit better than that. Come to think of it, it's remarkable how much a human being can change in three and a half years. Remember Kathy in the old days? What a funny-looking little thing she was. And you gave her the best years of your life. Were they the best years? That's the style. Clatter up the stairs. Treat the place as if it were your own. What are you creeping about like that for? Oh, yes, of course. The next stair creep. Why don't you take off your shoes, you fool? No. Your socks want mending. Don't be a fool. What are you thinking of? Kathy mend your socks? This Kathy? Never in a thousand years. Besides, what do you care? Notice anything? You're not out of breath. You used to be like a pocket puffing Billy in the old days. At least the war's done that for you. Come on now, pull yourself together. And don't forget, if she's there, be firm, distant, and determined. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. I wasn't asleep. I just came for my things. Do you remember those high walls that used to make the room so dark? Yes. They've gone. Look. Well, you've certainly got the view you always want. Miles and miles of it. But, oh, Robert, the desolation. Poor old London. Well, we've just got to build it up again. That's all. It'll take years and years. Well, what does that matter? We're young. 